the name of this work is Divide and Segment, an alternative for parallel segmentation. The authors are Paris, who is speaking, Emiliano and Leila Fonseca. Let's start. But when we see the basic uh, outline of uh, image processing, we, we can see something like we have the input, which is in the case of remote sensing image that is the target of this work. We acquire this image and pre-process. So this work will deal with uh, segmentation. After the segmentation, we have the, the phase of description, recognition and interpretation. And in the end, we have the output. All of these steps are connected to our knowledge base. So let's go to the next one. So what is segmentation? A simple, very simple definition is that segmentation partitions automatically one image into regions. Let's show an example of how, the, how does it work. Suppose we have this remote sensing image and a very small crop of uh, uh, urban area, figures in some of those scopes. We expect uh, that um, segmentation algorithm would be able to, um, as I, I said previously, to automatically split this image into the regions and create something like this according to the parameters that we define it one possible result could be like this one but when we start to, to uh, make uh, to see the reference about uh, image segmentation we can see that this is not a new area of study I just uh, found in the literature three examples of articles, image segmentation techniques from this data, a review on image segmentation techniques, 1993, and this other one is a very um, known algorithm from, from us, which is the region growing approach that is available at the Spring software. It was presented in 1996. So this is not a, a new one. However, we came with another uh, topic, which is called Geobia, Geobia, I don't know how to say, which is geographic object-based image analysis, which is um, is a let's say a more or less new area that gathers the objects from the segmentation. Let's say that each one of that polygons that we um, got from the segmentation, we can say that this is an object. <laughs> when we link this object to its properties, so this analysis is the, the core of geographic object-based image analysis. So segmentation is now uh, again uh, the topic of study. So some uh, remarks about segmentation algorithms. They must consider the context, the scale, the neighborhood, meaning and also computational resources because we will see that um, the images, especially the remote sense images, are very uh, large if you consider the entire scene. So we need lots of computational uh, resources in order to get good results from the segmentation. We need to consider context because if we say uh, I'm working with an uh, urban image, uh, the, the polygons of my interest can be the, the roofs. If I'm working with different targets, the context will be different. We need to consider the scale, the neighborhood. And this concept of neighborhood is also very used in the GeoBio because they, as I said, the, that link between the objects and the properties, one of the properties are how uh, or Consider this polygon, how it is related to its neighbors. So we can make inferences considering the neighbors and apply or give a certain meaning to what each one of the polygons. Continue. But con continue to talk about this part of uh, computational research. This reference, they say that good, good quality results, segmentation results, often come at the price of high computational cost, which means that we must 
develop or must have uh, good algorithms and good resources to have good segmentation uh, results. For example, the Iconos satellite have the, a collection rate of 890 megapixels for each minute, the, the collection rate. And another example is the Sibers, which is 120 megapixels each minute. However, if you, we would um, apply segmentation on all this data, we have this, the following uh, conclusion. Even a tuned sequential segmentation algorithm is far slower than this rate. This means that our segmentation algorithms that we have uh, nowadays, they are not as good as the, um, the high amount of data that are provided daily by the remote sensing satellites. So there is a scope for improvement in this case. Let's continue this. So one question that comes from this introduction that I tried to make is how to segment large remote sensing images. This is a question that we are trying to answer with this work. So part of the, the answer in in my opinion, or in the opinion of my work, is methods based on this technique or strategy called divide and conquer. They do, they can uh, be part of the solution because they can split the image into tiles or break one very uh, large image into parts and segment these parts individually. So, uh, we already have some methods in the literature that does this method this uh, strategy of divide and conquer. And how they do in general? In the first part they split the image, <coughs> the image, segment each one of them individually, and then in a post-processing step they try to merge the, the segments, uh, the neighboring segments in that, uh, that tiles. We are trying to, to propose a different approach that I will try to show to you now. So, since we have this uh, method of first we, um, how can I say, we crop the images into crisp tiles, this is the default method, and in the end we make the post-processing to try to join these uh, bordering regions, we propose a slightly different approach, which is basically uh, considered by these steps what we, we intend to do. Instead of making a post-processing of the, the neighboring objects, we are, going to, we are proposing to make a pre-processing of the images in order to break the, these images according to the behavior that we expect the polygons will have in these areas. Let's try to be more clear with, uh, with this outline. Let's show the first part. Since we have the original image, we can define a number of crop tile lines. Let's show this in an image. Suppose we have this image and we want to make a segmentation of this image in two parts. So I, I, we can define this line as a crop line, a crisp crop line, and as I said, traditional methods would get this part segment and this part, lower part, and segment they individually. So we in the first step of our approach, we define this crop line. We can define more lines if we want. And our experiments will show this one. What is the next step? We are going to make a pre-processing of these tile lines considering a certain uh, buffer that I will try to explain off. So, how this, the pre-processing of this line would result in a better segmentation in our approach? Since we get that original tile line, we can define what I call a buffer, which is this red and green line here. And we are trying to find, considering this line, a line that would fit better to the elements which are in this original line. After this step, that we preprocess the line, 
we will crop the original image and we get something like this, considering that line. Then, now I can make the segmentation of this part and this part individually and we expect that in the result we just merge the segments from both images and we do not need the, the post-processing step to merge the, the segments. So in the <coughs> result we would have something like this. <coughs> and uh, that line that we define it automatically should be somewhat, somewhere in this image. So this is the, the outline of our method. And how we do this? Now I show the, the method uh, to find the, that line. So how does it work? We define more or less five, six steps. The first step, we, we get a pixel in that tile line. We, we will process pixel by pixel in that line in our method. We will find a border considering that pixel and then we will change the original tile line to that pixel. Assign the next pixel to the same border position. Uh, I will show in a graph that can be better uh, explained. And then we repeat until no more uh, pixels remain. Consider that this line is the original tile line that is the blue line from the, the previous image. So, what uh, I said here is let's find the border of the first pixel in the timeline. So we, we define something that I call a profile. This is the central pixel and we get these neighbors from this pixel and we will call this a profile. Let's see this, how to find a border. This is the profile, if you see this uh, in this graph, pixel by, by the line number. Then we get the, the pixel uh, along the, the line and we get the first slope. The first slope we have will have an information that will point to the border in that profile. Okay? Then the next step, suppose that this this profile that what I, I showed <coughs> in the, the graph, we found the this border. So the the second step is to find the border, the third step is to move the original tie line to this pixel and when we go to the second or to the next pixel we just start from here because we don't want um, how can I say, a very different uh, behavior between the neighbors. So this is the way, it's quite simple way that we try to find our uh, new border to crop the image and after we do this we crop the image in these two parts and we believe that uh, these two parts can be segmented individually with some errors that we can find, I will show in the, the results, but still with a quite fast uh, algorithm because it's just get the profile, get the, uh, the slope and the border. So let's see the results. Here we show a quick bird image from San Jesus Campos. This image has 1024 square pixels and we use these two parameters. 8 pixels for the threshold number 1 and 20 pixels for the buffer. Up and down. And we get this different uh, tile line and we crop it this individually. And now I, I show the dividing segment strategy and also the traditional approach which makes a, a crisp tile line and after this the post processing tries to, to merge the images. So I highlight here which I can say that is not, not a good initialization of the, the algorithm so the, the image didn't get the best uh, segmentation in this part but in the, uh, the rest of the image we can see very good results. And here I highlight in yellow that some of the remaining segments got this crispy behavior that is not um, desired by who uses segmentation. This is the first result. Now I show a second result which shows a Sievers HRC image from the state of Bahia which was with uh, 1000 um, square pixels. I used a different threshold, T1 5 pixels and T2 
100 pixels. Of course, I needed to, uh, to use this, buff, this higher buffer just in order to find this, this profile along this, uh, this target of the image. And we see in the different approaches that our approach, of, we, we could make a segmentation in this place uh, better than a traditional approach that would not merge this, these two parts because they should have some um, different spectral properties considering the strategy of the algorithm to merge the readings. Um, okay. The third uh, result and the last one is a quick burn image from Sao Paulo, have this size, Sao Paulo by 1175 pixels, and I use uh, different values 41 and 2. This is the one I showed in the, the example in the, the outline, but now just in the detail we can show here our approach and a traditional approach that, as I, I said before. In this place, in this result we could find a better behavior of the divided segment and a worse behavior of the traditional approach. So I just try to show these three examples to show a different approach uh, for dividing images and try to avoid post-processing steps, which in some cases can be uh, computational expensive because we need to get. Suppose we have this, this result and we get this polygon and the, all these polygons in the top of in the image in the top and all these polygons in the lower part. So we would have to make some comparison between each polygon and all its neighbors from the lower part in order to find what is the uh, more, most similar polygon and then we would uh, merge them. So using this approach, in this case we avoided this post-processing. Post uh, now the conclusions of my work. Uh, right. Current segmentation methods, they create this as I said, crisp tiles, and they need post-processing -proc steps to, to get the final regions, as I already said. However, now let's say the not so good part of my work, but we have to, to tell also, the shape of some regions close to the new lines that we define by algorithm did not split the image targets properly. And this, is a, uh, this is one of the problems that we found in the result because we define the line and when the line crosses here it tries to find some border and in this case this was the most close to a border that it could find but anyway, since we are avoiding the post-processing we could not merge these two elements well, dealing with such problems is still um, an open problem which we currently unsolved but it is in our future works well, uh, some other future works is the initialization issues because we currently always begin with the leftmost pixels and our, our experiments uh, were, all, uh, were always in the, considering only horizontal lines but it could be extended to vertical also and also the automatic definition of the parameters TU1 and T2 based on specific segmentation parameters because considering the algorithm. Here we are not talking about the segmentation algorithm that each algorithm uh, has its own kind of parameters. So we, we can deal with these parameters and also our parameters maybe to get better results. Okay, this is my presentation. Thank you.